Okay, welcome back to the channel. And we've just got a couple of minutes until the latest Bank of England interest rate decision. Just looking at interest rates here in the UK over the last 20 years, what's going to be particularly interesting from a historical standpoint is today markets are very much expecting them to increase interest rates again for the second consecutive meeting. And as you can see here, rates haven't risen in back-to-back -back meetings since going back all the way to the initial rate sequence that we saw back in 2004. So it's quite meaningful from that perspective. Why and what's the main rationale for this? Well, Actually, CPI has been the main culprit, and we know that UK CPI came in at 5.4% at the end of last year, December 2021. It's the highest reading since March of 1992. Inflationary pressures persisting, naming from, uh, namely from rising energy prices, supply chain disruptions, and low base effects from the previous year. So much in a similar vein to the Fed, the market has been quite aggressive in pricing in tightening of a fairly rapid pace coming from the Bank of England. Now, a few other quick things. Um, as I just mentioned, markets are very much expecting rates to rise today. In fact, they're close to pricing in 1.5% interest rate by the end of the year, implying the biggest tightening of policy in a calendar year since 1997, if that was to materialise. So one of the key things we're looking out for here is, of course, the rate announcement, the vote split, expected to be unanimous, but we've also got the minutes and then the commentary that we'll hear um, alongside this as it comes out, because this is the February meeting, so we'll also get the monetary policy report looking at projections for growth and inflation to determine their rate path in the future. Biggest thing to look out for here is any pushback against this very aggressive market pricing. Okay, we've just got a couple of seconds till it comes out, so I'm going to turn on the squawk so you can hear everything coming out live. Ten seconds. Okay, I have in front of me here the cable chart, cable futures, sterling dollar. About five seconds now to the release. High 25, that's high 25 as expected, and that was a 9 nil vote, so that's a 9 nil vote there. So hike is expected, unanimous as expected. Interestingly, though, Ramsden, Saunders, Haskell and Mann voted to raise rates by 50 basis points to 0 spot 75 percent So although they were unanimous, they needed to hike. There was a divergence in views there. The likes of Ramsden, Saunders, Haskell and Mann voting to raise rates by 50 basis points to 0 spot 75 percent Immediate upside in cable, now bridging 136 to the upside. They also voted 9 nil to reduce corporate bond purchase target to zero from that twenty billion pounds. Yeah, so at the moment, just while the squawk continues to go, the biggest reason for that pop there is that there were a couple of members who were wanted an immediate 50 basis point rate hike. So really ramping it up the pace, and that was very unexpected. Um, no real economists on the street were expecting that type of move. In fact, there were four Bank of England dissenters who all wanted a 50 basis point rise to 0.75%. So although the decision was unanimous, they all wanted a hike. Four of them, so only just outvoted by five to four, wanted to go even more aggressive. So hence the pop we've seen here initially in price. In terms of the inflation forecast, in one year's time, I've seen 2.15% down from the November forecast of 2.23%, but oh, that's the two-year forecast. In one year time, that's the five point two one. Okay, just switching my screens for a moment, one of the interesting things here is that this is looking at the MPC breakdown by the dovishness or hawkishness that the market typically assigns to these members. And we had four dissenters, all looking for 50 basis points uh, of increase here. And those were Ramsden and Saunders. So they've always been the far reaching, most hawkish members. That's come as very little surprise. But what is a bit of a surprise is the other ones are Haskell and Mann. Jonathan Haskell sits here on the spectrum. Catherine Mann sits here. And so rather than Hugh Pill, the chief economist, or Bailey himself, or Broadbent, is actually some of those more on the dovish side disposition that actually wanted more aggressive near-term action, which is quite surprising. Here are the Bloomberg headlines. So as you can see, other than the ones we've just covered, they begin the QE unwinding. They plan to fully unwind stock of corporate bond purchases. So yeah, overall, initial take is this is pretty aggressive in terms of on the hawkish side. They'll consider actively selling gilts when the key rate is at 1%. Further modest tightening is likely in the coming months is the type of language that they're using.
So in terms of market pricing now, the market has pulled forward their Bank of England hike bets. They now see the bank rate at 1% by May. So again, a surprise here. They've taken it from a quarter basis point to half. So the market expecting another 50 basis points by May. Uh, May would be when the next monetary policy inflation report comes out. They come out four times a year, February, May, August and November. Quick look here on a 90 minute candlestick just to give us some perspective on the price action. The overall move certainly is a big pop on the initial intraday move, but it's not huge, I would say. I mean, we've gone from around 135.50 up to around 36.27. And you can see here the R2 just providing the futures a little bit of near term resistance. But yeah, a, a bit of that magnitude, 75 pips or so, it's not by far the biggest I've ever seen. But certainly there's enough ammunition in these hawkish comments to provide that move. The real crux of where we end now really comes down to the press conference, which will begin shortly. Just while we wait for the press conference, obviously one of the things that this would indicate then is that there are probably going to be more subsequent rate hikes from the Bank of England in the coming months. And something that's really grabbing the headline news today is tied to what is this inflation um, focus that they have, and that is that electricity and gas bills typically uh, for a typical household are going to go up by 54%. It came out earlier today. That equates to around £700 a year or so um, in April. Every six months, to give a context to what this is and, and what this energy price cap is, is every six months off-gen, the energy regulator reviews and, and reviews the maximum price that suppliers in England, Wales and Scotland can charge domestic customers um, on a default or standard or a variable tariff. And so this is when they set out on these semi-annual um, reviews what the price cap is for that moment in time and about 15 million households saw their energy bills increase by 12 percent when it was last updated update, excuse me in october and now they're going to go up by 54 percent and prices were very much well expected to go up again in october when the cap is next reviewed so uh, again the, the big component of course is namely rising energy prices that are contributing to this cpi number 5.4 percent i have seen wall street banks predicting that inflation in the UK could go as high as 7%. So obviously still a long way to run and would give the rationale then of why some of these Bank of England members wanted to be uber aggressive with their go hard, go strong, go fast mentality to get ahead of that problem for it then to tail off uh, and not have to play catch up later down, down the line. 